All right, so we spent this amount of time looking at the different screens of Instagram. You should still explore them on your own. Now we're going to look at the biggest screen out there, which is this share screen. This is a weird icon. I never really liked it, but it's, it's the take a photo icon, basically. So this big icon right there in the middle, if you tap that, the first time it might ask you to, um, to allow it to share your camera or not. And depending on your device, you might have a different screen like mine. Uh, I just flipped it over to the front-facing camera. You can't quite see it, but I've got a little spinning arrow right there. If I tap that, it goes to the back, but obviously you're not going to see anything. So if I tap that, it's front-facing. Let's say I'm just going to take a photo of, of myself, but you've got library, take a photo, create a video. So remember, we can do 15-second videos on Instagram, or take a photo, or load one up from the library, whatever is saved on your device. So I'm just going to take a photo. You can tap that button. So that's the photo. We have then the famous filters down at the bottom. All of these filters, one at a time, can be applied to a photo. So the very first filter is normal. And here's some new ones that were added. Uh, Clarendon, Gingham, etc. So if I say, what does this one look like? I tap Moon, there's my photo. What about Lark, Reyes, etc. There's a bunch of them now. That Instagram, I mean that Wikipedia article needs to be updated because there's more of them. And Hefe, Inkwell, etc. So whatever photo filter you like here, Clarendon, some of them you may say, well, these look almost the same. And yes, some look very similar, some like skew toward a certain color. You're not required to use any filters. You can use the original if you want. And even that is a hashtag. Hashtag no filter. So one word, no filter. Hashtag no filter. That's a filter that people use. Well, that's a hashtag people use to show off, I didn't use a filter. Hashtag no filter. But if you like any of these, you can select them. I won't select the filter yet because there's other things I want to look at also. This is a pretty complex screen because I've got, there's my photo, there's my filters at the bottom, but at the top I've got a bunch of icons as well. The um, first icon at the top, that's supposed to be a classic film filter, a classic camera film filter. If I have a classic, you know, Canon camera and I screw a filter onto it, that's what that represents. I've got a little um, sun, which is Lux. What that's supposed to do is sort of like create an optimized version of the photo automatically. And there's a slider here. I can move it all the way up to 50, to 100%. And maybe on my projector it's not quite obvious, but it is altering my photo in different ways. If I lower Lux all the way down, it becomes a little less contrasty. Higher is bigger contrast. I can actually apply Lux and then filters. I'm not going to do that just yet. I kind of like a higher Lux reading on it, but I'm going to cancel it at the moment. I've got filters, I've got Lux, and then I've got this little gear. That's a complex one there. Under gear, I can do all of these things like adjust it, change brightness, contrast, structure. Let's see structure. I'm going to just play with that, increasing it. It's kind of getting posterized. It's losing quality adjust. I can rotate it. Or like that. So there's all of these things that I can do within this gear. I can spend all day making it perfect. I can go to warmth, make it warmer, Fade, saturation, vignette, tilt shift, sharpen, lots of ways to play with the photo. I'm not going to look at them all. That's your job. But what I will do is show you, that, show you that at the very end, one of the things that's popular is tilt shift. This is that sort of like focus blur effect. To make something more stand out more than the rest, I can do the tilt shift. And so I went to that icon and we've got off, then we've got radial and linear. If I select radial, look at that, and I can drag this. 
th this part right here will be in focus and the rest blurry. I can change that just dragging it and say my arm right here is in focus and the rest is blurry. This is very popular to do. I can actually with two fingers change the size of this blur circle larger, smaller. Make a really small blur so that only my one eye right there is in focus. Again, my projector might not be so obvious, but it's blurred right there. Linear is that there's going to be a line of focus which can be rotated. If I put this up vertically like this, so you see that part of the photo stands out vertically and the rest is a little blurry. This can just be dragged where you want it, and it can be expanded, two fingers, and then also rotated. So you have lots of ways to do these advanced filters. These are the manual methods. Or if you go back to the top filter, you just say, well, I really like the look of slumber, and I'm done. I can mix and match. I'm going to add slumber, and I'm also going to also add the tilt shift radial. So I've got the filter and the blur. Suppose I could also add Lux on that. After I'm done playing with that, I can always spend a lot of time on it. After you post it, you cannot go back to re-edit it. The photo is done. So once I proceed from this screen, I can't go back to further edit it. I can go back to edit, for example, if I add a caption and such. I'll get back to that. But let's say I'm happy with the photo at this point. I'll click Next. Share to followers or direct? I've got three followers. So when I share this, those three that followed me could see it in their timeline. But again, if this account is following, if that if a certain account is following a thousand of them, a thousand accounts, mine might just zoom by because that person is following a lot. So I want to get, I want to share that to all my followers. There's direct also that once I've got connections, I can share, um, I can share. And this actually goes to anyone. Oh, I'm going to share this with Ariana Grande. She's going to ignore it, but I can share uh, photos directly with accounts on Instagram. Usually you'll be doing to followers, everyone that's following you. Caption. So here's where you can write. You can actually write a lot. This is not limited to a tweet. You can write hundreds of characters here. You can write a whole essay. I see people do that although Instagram is a bit more visual, so people probably won't stick around to read a lot. But here I'm going to write, uh, you know, the, just the title, the title of the photo. And if I want to add hashtags, I also have the ability here to add hashtags. As you start writing a hashtag, As you start writing hashtags, it's going to suggest to you what you might want to use based on popularity. So I wanted to hashtag it deep thoughts. Hashtag Victor. Let's see what that has. Victoria. Victorious secret. Victory. Victor. 419,000 posts. So I'm going to hashtag it that too. And of course, I can do emoji if I want. Yeah.
if this were a group photo, I can select tag, tap to tag people. Let's say there was someone over my shoulder here. I tap right there. Who's in there? Where I'm gonna I'm gonna put as I start writing someone's um, Instagram name. I can tag other people there. Add location. If I want to attach this to a to a location nearby, now that's been added to that location. And then if I want to share it to these other networks, I have to click and log into them. And what I share here to Instagram will also get sent out to the other networks. Any questions on this screen or the process so far? So you saw that I took a photo at this moment, filtered it, and I'm going to share it. I could also go to the library and load up a photo that was previously taken. Share that. There you go. So all my followers could see that. Could then result in those actions right there. I could get the uh, the heart if someone like I'm looking at that and if I like it I can tap the heart and so now they've got 146 likes never mind I don't like it I'll take it off so I could have that for mine as well someone comes across that photo they like it they can tap the heart or you can also double tap that's the possibly a shortcut although it's gauche to like your own photo so uh, if people then like your photo, they can tap the heart, they can double tap. What they could also do is the comment. So these are kind of in the order that I would say that are the value of interactions. Emma Sweets. I can do favorite there, great, move on, what's next? I like that one too, favorite, move on. A higher level would be a comment. If I add comment with along the with all of these other people also that have commented I'm part of the conversation I could say looks great I can write whatever I want I can add hashtags I can keep the conversation going I want this for my photos as well I want people to comment on my photos the reason for that is maybe they haven't followed me maybe they ran across my photos simply through search but then someone commented if they took the time to comment they probably care about my content so what I would do is, let's say one of these people commented on one of my photos. I can click on their um, account and again go in to see. He, she's got nearly 6,600 followers and following 900. I could follow and now I'm going to be her 6,600th follower. She got an alert and then she could follow me back. Obviously, from this fake account that I'm doing, probably not. But if it was a real account, it might have a value. And then the next level of interaction is this little arrow here. That's a share. Send to. I like that photo so much, I'm going to share it with my connections. I can select more than one. So I'm sending that directly with a message to other people to share it for discovery. I want that. I post this great cupcake, and it's on sale, and then some of my followers really like it, and then they share it with their followers. I'm going to send it to that group of people. So yes, I don't know who those people are. They're probably going to see who is this person sending me this stuff. But usually you're going to be doing this obviously for relevant accounts. I'm going to go back to share again. I'm going to tap that uh, post photo button again. Because as I said, you can go to your library. You can take a photo right now or you can do a video. I'm going to play with video for a moment. I'm going to select video. And the way this works is you've got 15 seconds. This little counter down here is going to fill up to the top 15 seconds. 
and the way it records is you tap the button and you hold it so I'm gonna put the camera around here I'm gonna tap it and hold it hello everyone this is my Instagram photo I mean video so then I'm gonna switch I'm gonna switch angles here I'm learning how to do Instagram and then I'm gonna do something else this is a pencil so I have all of those 15 seconds to fill in and you could just turn it on and record 15 seconds straight sure you could do what I did which was every time every time I tap and hold that's when I'm being recorded if I stop holding it it stops recording see that and I can fill up the whole amount of time and now I've run out of my 15 seconds I don't have to fill all 15 seconds up I can fill up you know to the first line or so and then I can go next I'm learning how to do Instagram this is a pencil every time I tap and hold that's when I'm being recorded if I stop holding hello everyone this is my Instagram photo and because it's Instagram I could also attach filters hello everyone this is my Instagram photo I'm learning how to do Instagram this is a pencil every time I tap and hold that's when I'm being recorded if I stop holding so I can tap to play it pause it and then I can choose a filter hello So at the top again, I've got, do you want a filter? Hello, everyone. This is my Instagram photo. I'm learning how to do Instagram. I'm not sure what that icon is up there, actually. Flip it. Mute it. Hello, everyone. Choose a cover frame. This one up here is, what's the first photo that's going to display when someone plays your video? So I can jump to different clips in my video. That's the preview. That's like the thumbnail of the first video that I'm going to display. And it's going to be very similar then to sharing a photo, but this time it's a video to people, to the other networks. Notice I can't share it to Swarm. You can't put videos on Swarm. You can send it to these other networks. You can attach a location or not. Go share. My Instagram photo. Um. So you saw that there's the fo there's the video, it's got the filter, 15 seconds. You can tap it to pause it. Hello everyone, this is my Instagram photo. Do Instagram. So you go Instagram photos, Instagram pictures. You have those two big things that you can share on Instagram. And all my followers, hopefully, then will engage in these different interactions. Let's say you posted something. You don't want it anymore. You've got the three dots. Delete. Or you can go back to edit. But you really, you can only edit the description, the caption. You can't edit the content anymore. You can go back and add a location, sure. Besides that, there's not much else that you can edit. No, it won't delete it off of Facebook or Flickr or whatever. It's a different service. It can't reach into that service to delete it. It's only going to delete it from this service, from Instagram. But it will delete it if someone else you know, liked it and such, it'll delete it from their likes. So, every time I...
when I'm um, when I'm posting something, I'm going to go back and edit the text of my of this photo back here. When I click to edit, it goes back to my editing um, screen, and whenever I'm writing any text, I could mention another account with the at symbol. So as I start typing, it might suggest names. And so what happens on that is I'm mentioning someone else on Instagram. So that's an active link. Goes to the account. So whenever you, you do the at name, the trick is you need to know the, the, the username, the at name. Uh, I might be Victor Campos on, on Instagram, but my my username is VM Campos. So uh, that's often a confusing thing because again, Victor was taken five years ago at Victor. But you're able to attach to a post someone else's account. The point of that is to make someone aware of the content, uh, to connect with other people, perhaps to get more shares. So what you're going to post is going to be up to you depending on your brand, your product, your identity, etc. You can post photos, you can post video. What to post really should also in be informed by the activity that's happening, the, sh the, the search, the trends and such. Because if I have an idea about New Moon, I could possibly share that because it might be relevant to what's happening at the moment in the Instagram community. So always check out what's happening under search to give me the idea of what to post myself. So after learning after learning the tools, after learning the tools, then it's up to you to create the content to actually share it. And the more you engage in this, the more you share, the more an audience you build. Uh, over at Southwestern College, I teach a version of this class, a social media class, that is 16 weeks long. We cover lots of networks, and we also have homework there for a grade. So when we did the Instagram assignment, the homework on that was to share something on Instagram new every day for one week straight. So one new thing every day for seven days with a different hashtag every time. So that, in my hopes, was to force people to think, to be creative. What are you going to post? Are you going to post the exact same kind of photo two days in a row, three days in a row? Boring. Why is anyone going to follow you? So to be forced into doing that, people got creative. And then extra credit was uh, videos, because that is another mentality and another kind of bit of content. So if you do take my classes at Southwestern College for grades and such, it is much more intense. We have here three, three and a half hours to learn this stuff, to get your questions answered, and then we're done and we move on. But over there, we have we, we spend a whole week talking about a network and we've got homework and everything, and I think the people that come out of those classes learn a lot, but it's a lot of effort. After looking at Instagram so far today, let me ask, how many of you had an Instagram account before today's class? Most people, it seems. Okay. If you already had one before, did you learn anything new today? Hopefully, yes. And if you were new, then obviously you learned a lot. So the main thing that I, that as far as I can teach you what to post, I can't teach you that because it's going to depend on your product. But get inspired by what everyone else is doing. And you might think, I can't do that. Yes, you can. You can do a version of that. Look at that photo right there. Just a random photo that I saw. That's such a boring <coughs> photo. But it's obviously a very important soccer player. 713,000 likes. Oh yeah, it's him. It's Neymar, isn't it? So, honestly, terrible photo. Not that interesting. But the content of it, who, who's in the photo, the concept of it is the one that 
got it, got it up to 713,000 likes. Which, of course, it doesn't hurt that he probably has a few million followers. Yeah, only 36 million followers. <laughs> so basically, he can post anything and it'll get lots of likes because sheer momentum. In order for you to be at that point, you need to post stuff. You also need to cross post. You've got that LinkedIn account we talked about previously. If it relates, I'm going to post something on Instagram and I'm going to share it also on LinkedIn. Now, I didn't see a way to share directly from Instagram to LinkedIn, but actually it is there. If you have your photo or someone else's photo, you've got the three dots copy share URL. You're going to get the link to that photo. Copy that, then I'm going to load my LinkedIn app and share it on LinkedIn. So that photo that I posted on Instagram will now also spread on LinkedIn, where maybe I already have some followers, and I want to perhaps bring some of those followers from LinkedIn over to, over to Instagram. So that just gives you the address. You go and share it on an email on LinkedIn, on um, Rabadaba, etc. So as we wind down the main lecture, any uh, general questions on anything we've talked about all day? Yes? Sorry, you already covered this. Um, when I posted before, I moved to a site that has trending hashtags. Mm -hmm. Is that like considered black hat? No, um, that's a good point. You, thanks for reminding me. I'm going to mention a website here um, because this tr trending hashtags here is really nice, but there's plenty of other websites out there that collect this information because uh, Instagram makes it public, and they make lists, and they say these are the trending hashtags at the moment, and these are the best ones if you're a photographer, and these are the best ones, this and that. So no, Instagram does offer a bunch of data, but perhaps not in the most tailored to you. So there's plenty of other websites and apps that will then tell you these are the best hashtags for you. Let me switch over to my main screen over here. They changed its name. For a long time it was called Statagram, and I believe it's called Icono Square. Yeah, this is it here. This is the one I like. It used to be called Statagram. Iconosquare.com. Key metrics for your Instagram. So they have this free and paid version. And basically this will allow you to keep track of a bunch of stats on your Instagram account. You don't get very detailed apps, very detailed stats on the app itself. But if you come to this account here and you sign in with your Instagram it will then tell you where are your followers coming from what countries other bits of valuable information the thing about this is modern websites nowadays when they have you sign in through another website they're much more safe you think well I'm giving them my Instagram address who are they they're gonna run off with it no modern websites that have you sign in through another provider are safer because if I click sign in with Instagram it's gonna bounce me back to the official Instagram account with security I'm gonna sign in here Instagram will vouch for me and send me back to Iconosphere Iconos, Iconosquare and it will not they will never have my password I'm signing in through good old Instagram that confirms it and then it's gonna send me back to on my way. So let me do that. I'm going to log in with the account I just created. Well, since I created a fake account, I don't remember my fake password. But I would assume I was able to log in. It would then show me a screen of data, of course, but from this screen also, once you log in, there's going to be a screen where it'll show you the top 
trending hashtags and such and you can search hashtags to see what's most effective so there's many of them out there um, but this is one of the ones that I like and here it's suggesting I just typed in cats and here's all these suggestions and that's data coming directly officially from Instagram just being shown in a different way I wish it had commas but um, this is one of these sites I recommend it to go a little bit above and beyond Instagram the, the big catch though is you cannot post to Instagram from this or basically any other unofficial app you can really only post on the official Instagram app except for six tag which I don't know what tricks they've done and it's only available on Windows. Maybe it'll be ported to the other apps, stores, but I really like Six Tag because it lets you manage multiple accounts at once. And it has different filters and different features and such. If you've got a Windows phone, I do recommend it. Actually better than the official Instagram app at the moment. Any final questions? Yes? I haven't really played with it. There's so many hours in the day. You might know more about it. What is it? What is Boomerang? Introducing Boomerang from Instagram. It's not a photo, it's not a GIF, it's a boomerang. Okay, I guess it's like animated graphics, animated GIFs, which are very popular. So... Hyperlapse, yeah. So, there's hyperlapse, there's boomerang, and so forth. Just different ways to, to share photos and such. Um, we've got enough on our plates, perhaps, at the moment with, with um, Instagram. That's a whole world there. But there's always something new to learn. So that's it for the main lecture at this point. We'll have some lab time until 1 in case you need some individual help and such. If this were my other class, I would tell you, post something new every day. That's how you're going to get used to this. That's how you're going to get good at it. Maybe you're going to challenge yourself. Post something new every day. Take photos, filter it, play with it. Don't like it? Delete it. It's okay. When we come back next time, uh, we're going to talk about YouTube. I'm going to show you basic video editing. I'm going to provide you with some video clips. You don't have to come with any video clips. We're not going to record any on the spot. I'm going to provide you a few video clips. I'm going to show you um, the video editor of choice because it's free on Windows. It's Windows Movie Maker. And I'm going to mention also the video editor of choice on the Mac, which is free also, iMovie. And there's, of course, more powerful and more expensive video editors out there. But next time, we will create a short video together from the clips that I give you. Once we've got that, then we'll create a YouTube account and upload our video there and talk about optimizing for YouTube. Because by some estimates, YouTube is the second largest social network. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, basically in that order. You might not have thought about it, but YouTube, it's got hundreds of millions of users. Traffic, and um, that could give you a big audience as well. And actually, very few networks let you do this. YouTube is one of them. You can make money off of your content. Uploading YouTube videos could be profitable for you, and it is. There are these YouTube personalities out there that you won't believe that they make literally a million dollars a year off of their YouTube videos. More than that, I'm being conservative. There's one guy that supposedly made $20 million last year off of uh, YouTube. And I myself have made like a cool $10 off of YouTube. Mm -hmm. A year. So far. By the hours, like five cents. <laughs> so it's doable and we'll talk about that and usually when I teach my class that is four weeks or longer usually I cover YouTube on two days 
because we usually can spend one day just on the video editing aspect of things and one day on the YouTube SEO aspect of things. We have to cram it in into one day and um, we'll do fine. But let's have some lab time. If you need it, we'll be back next time and we'll talk about YouTube.